What's up guys, welcome to another video. Welcome back to the channel. Now, on my time on YouTube as a DJ, I have posted countless record pool reviews. And I seem to get asked the same two questions over and over again. So this is my dedicated video answering those two questions specifically. Let's get straight into it. So the first question that I get asked all the time is, if I cancel my record pool subscription, do I get to keep the music that I have got from that particular record pool? And the answer is absolutely 100% yes, you do keep the music that you have got from the record pool because it is downloaded to your computer or your laptop. I'm living proof of this. In the past, I have subscribed to DJ City. I've got tracks from there. I've got tracks from BPM Supreme. I've got tracks from Heavy Hits, Crate Connect. I've used all of these pools and I have still got that music on my laptop because it is a physical file that you download to your machine and it continues to work even after you cancel your subscription. I now only have one record pool subscription at the moment, and that is with Zip DJ. And uh, yeah, all of the music that I have from these other sites over the years still very much works, and I still play a lot of it on a regular basis. Think of a record pool download, okay, just like any other download on the internet. So I don't know if you do like online banking or credit card or whatever, and you download your statement, that file is on your laptop, your computer until you decide to delete it. There is one caveat to this is this applies only, okay, to traditional record pools, not to streaming services. So if you are streaming through Beatport, Tidal, BeatSource, et cetera, et cetera, then if you cancel your subscription, even if you have tracks stored in an offline locker, those tracks will disappear because you don't own the file. It's not a physical downloaded file on your laptop. It's kind of, I don't know how the software works, but basically you don't own the actual track itself. And this is one of the reasons why personally I don't stream because I absolutely love having a personal record collection. I'm a little bit like, I guess, a stamp collector, hopefully a little bit cooler that I collect music, but I like having the actual copy of the track. With a streaming service, you've got to see it as almost like a, a rental for those tracks. And if you cancel that subscription, the tracks go. So see, streaming is like renting your tracks and uh, record pools and downloads as buying your tracks. That is what I would say. So streaming, no, record pools, yes. On to the second question that I seem to get asked quite a lot when it comes to record pools, and that is, what record pool would you recommend for X genre? Or what record pool would you recommend for this particular genre? And usually when people are quoting genres, it's very specialist genres whether it be, I don't know, like German techno or Melbourne house, or I don't know if these genres actually exist, by the way, I'm just making it up. But basically, to answer your question on this is, if you are a specialist or niche DJ that wants to focus on a very specific genre or a limited range of genres, then record pools are probably not the best solution for you, okay? I cannot recommend you a record pool that is really good for Melbourne House. I can't recommend you a record pool that's really good for German techno or liquid drum and bass. Ultimately, how all record pools function is they appeal to the mass market. They appeal to mainstream DJs. So if you DJ R&B, hip hop, dance, top 40, pop music, some throwbacks, but throwbacks aren't that great on record pools, in my opinion, then you're going to be covered, okay? But if you are a specialist or niche genre DJ, then you are going to be disappointed, and I cannot recommend any record pools to you. If you are one of these DJs, if you do fall into this category, my recommendation every single time is look on specialist sites where you can download individual tracks and buy your tracks individually. So that could be sites like Beatport, Juno Download, Track Source. There's loads of online record stores, but that is going to be 
the best port of call for getting your music, in my opinion. Now, you could be sitting there and thinking, oh, well, that's really expensive. And yes, you are right, downloading individual tracks versus having a subscription that allows you unlimited downloads is a lot more expensive. However, consider this, if you've subscribed to a record pool that costs you $20 in a month, and in that month you only download two tracks, that's $10 a download. Versus say you take your $20, you go on to Beatport and you download say 15 tracks within a month with that $20, then actually buying individual tracks is a much better value proposition for you. So hopefully that answers your question on that. There we have it, my two top questions that I seem to get asked over and over again answered. Hope that has been useful for you. Please do give this video a thumbs up as it will spread the word to other like-minded people that are looking for this type of video and I will see you next time.